My first sketch for the new studio room featured a large wall cabinet style design with two side-by-side -side TVs in it. But after getting feedback from others and adding up the lumber cost at today's prices, I decided to simplify the design. This led to more of a credenza style lower with floating shelves and a center mounted TV. I'm using an IKEA sit stand desk that I already own so the set can be used in different orientations. This will also become the set for the Geek Bits podcast. Link in description. Okay, well this is going to be the studio room and um, there's a lot of work that we need to do in here before we actually build the set. Um, so the first thing that I did was I replaced the lights and they're new, they're up, there were only two fixtures in here before um, and now there are four and they're uh, 5,000 lumen, uh, what they're called smooth LED so they don't, you don't actually see the LEDs, everything gets diffused and um, that makes this room feel really nice and bright. The problem is the walls in here are sort of this yellowy, beigey brown. I'm not exactly sure how this shows up on camera, um, but it looks, um, uh, well, what it does is it casts a very kind of uh, yellowish glow onto everything, and I don't like that. And what I'm going to do is repaint the room um, a kind of a light gray color. And then I'll also have to replace this rubber brown trim molding. I'll probably just use some like uh, 1x4 MDF or something like that, paint it white. Um, but before I do all of that, I have to start by prepping the room and there are all kinds of uh, holes where like pictures and things were hung by the previous owners. And so I'm going to go around the room and I'm going to patch all the holes. I'm going to take all the plates off the wall. I'm going to remove this baseboard and then we're going to start painting. First, I worked on filling all the holes. I like to take the butt of my 5-in-1 tool and indent the holes before filling them with spackling. Sometimes you have to fill the hole more than once if the spackling leaves a divot after drying. Next up, I went to work on removing the old rubber base molding. This stuff is generally glued to the wall and pulling it off will likely pull the paper off the drywall. I found that using my 5-in-1 tool or pulling the molding towards the floor would help keep it from pulling the paper above the molding. As long as I kept the damage below, it wouldn't really matter. Then, I went to work removing all of the covers from the switches and outlets around the room. And then put some tape around them. And anything else I wanted to keep free from paint got a nice strip of blue masking tape. Lastly, anywhere I patched the wall, I sprayed it with Kills Primer to keep it from flashing the paint after it dries. And with that, the room is ready for paint. I applied all the paint with a roller since I didn't want to have to mask the floor and the ceiling or worry about the air conditioning ingesting overspray. It's a little slower, but I feel like the results are just as good with some patience. And for those wondering, I went with a color called Light French Gray from Sherwin-Williams. With the room painted, it was time to start building the credenza. Luckily, David was in the shop today and able to help me cut down the larger pieces on the table saw. I then went to work measuring all of the different components, marking them to length, and cutting them down to size on the miter saw. As always, I like to label each board with its location, name, and orientation marks to make the assembly process easier. Some of the boards needed additional cuts. The toe kick, for example, needed to be removed from the end pieces. I used the jigsaw for these operations. Years ago, Rockler sent me these jigs for squaring the corners of things while holding them together while the glue dries. These are a dream when working alone. Once I got everything clamped up, I just added some brad nails to all of the corners and then used a wet paper towel to wipe away any glue squeeze out. I then added some glue where the toe kick cover will attach. I put it in place and then secured it with some brad nails. No banging your toes on this credenza. Okay, I want to give another uh, pro tip. I think these are always so important because um, they don't always, um, they're not always just uh, obvious. And so um, I need to assemble this and I'm here again by myself and I don't have any help. And so, you know, I need to get this shelf, for example, in the center. And I know the dimensions, I can measure and I can draw a line, right? Uh, but it's never going to be perfectly lined up. Something's always going to go wrong, especially when I'm trying to hold everything together all by myself. Um, you know, probably won't get exactly lined up and it won't be perfect, but there's a better way. 
And um, you know, you just kind of learn these things um, you know, when you have to work by yourself. And so here's what I'm going to do. The first thing I'm going to do is get this side shelf in. And this is going to be kind of a big open cubby and it'll have a door on it, right? These will all be the boxes. And so the first thing that I need to do is get this shelf in place. So the way to do that is to use this. This is the dimension, right? So if I pull this down, butt this up against it, I can uh, glue and nail it at the bottom. Then I can move this to the top, line it up, glue it and nail it, right? Then this will be affixed. Then I can move this. These are the side shelves. I mean, sorry, the uh, center shelves. And so, you know, they're going to go like right here and right here. But for now, I'll just put them up against the ends like this. And then the shelf can rest upon them. Now it's perfectly aligned. I don't have to do any work. It's, it's all super simple. I'll just glue it and nail it at each end. Once I'm done with that, then I can move these guys out to their proper locations and glue and nail those in. So that's how we'll do this without having to go through a lot of extra work and without having a helper. So with my plan in place, I went to work gluing and brad nailing all of the shelves and supports into place. The brad nails aren't really there to add structural support. Their only real purpose is to hold things in place while the glue dries, so I can keep working. If you don't have a brad nailer, don't let that stop you from making things. Just wait for the glue to dry before moving on to the next steps of your project. I wanted the front of the credenza to have a nice finished look. To accomplish this, I built a face frame out of 1x2s and then glued and brad nailed them into place. Now it's time for some paint. I went with a deep black paint called Tricorn Black from Sherwin-Williams. I thought this would give some nice contrast from the light gray wall. I want all of the color of my set coming from the items on display, not the furniture or walls. I decided again to just roll this paint on with a foam roller. Now, I did fill all the nail holes and cracks off camera because um, I forgot to film that part. After rolling the flat surfaces, I came back with a small brush and did all the cut-in work. And with the paint dry, it's time to start installing it in the new studio room. I built the credenza in two separate pieces to make moving and installing it simpler. So once in the room, I needed to join them together permanently. With the credenza in place, I went to work on the new baseboards. I decided to put a couple of coats of paint on them before installing them. This will mean I only have to paint the nail holes and joints after installing them. And that means a lot less time on my old man knees. I then took some measurements, made some cuts, and started installing them. Well, it never fails when you're doing a project like this that your drywall isn't straight. It's always wavy and curvy. And uh, because of that, there is a gap across the very top of the, um, uh, the bottom part of the set display. And in some places, it's tiny. It's like a 32nd of an inch. But in some places, it's almost a quarter of an inch. Again, that's because the sheetrock or the drywall is uh, doing like that as it goes along. Well, they make this really cool stuff. I could... I think it's called scribe molding, that's what I've always called it, uh, but it is, um, it's made out of polystyrene, so it's really flexible. You can bend this stuff in any way you want and, um, and it won't uh, break or crack. So what you do with this is you use this as a molding around the uh, back of cabinetry, um, or in this case our set, uh, the bottom portion of our set, and um, you just lay it down push it up against the drywall and it will follow the shape of the drywall, but it will hide all of the gaps and cracks along the top. Then you just um, nail it down with a brad nailer, uh, caulk it and paint it, and it looks beautiful. So that's what we're gonna do. Moving on, it's time to install the TV. I decided to go with a 50 inch and center it on the credenza. 
Of course, we're mounting this on the wall to make it look nice and clean. If you install the mount temporarily, you can use it to get your measurements for drilling the holes in the wall. Since I have aluminum studs on this wall, I use toggle bolt anchors to securely grab the studs inside the wall. I wanted all the wires inside the wall, so I used my multi-tool to cut out a hole for a box that will contain power and HDMI cables. This box just tilts into the wall and then screws clamp it in place. I lifted the TV and hung it on the mount. It's amazing how little these modern TVs weigh. When I was growing up, moving a TV was a two-man job. And there it is. It looks great, but we need some shelves on each side of it. So I went to work in the shop building some floating shelves. I picked floating shelves because they look really modern and there would be no sides to block my prop items regardless of camera angles. Floating shelves work by attaching these metal pegs to the wall, so I need to make sure to leave some space for them and to allow me to still adjust the shelf side to side. These spacers will do just that and give me an attachment point for the bottom cover. You can see how the pen just slides into these holes. To make sure the shelves are perfectly aligned, I used a laser level to mark my lines. I could then come back using a regular level as a straight edge and draw some pencil marks. Where I could, I ran screws into the aluminum studs. Everywhere else, I used screw and drywall anchors. I'd have preferred to use toggle bolts, but I just couldn't find any that would fit these brackets. The shelves just literally slide over the pegs and are held into place by friction. And man, does that ever look cool. But we're not done yet. We're going to trick this whole set out with some WS2813 LED lighting. This is the Geek Pub after all. At the front of each floating shelf and each box in the credenza, I installed a strip of RGB LED lights. I used black heat shrink tubing to help blend it in and hide the wires, hot gluing them to the shelf. I chose this method because I could easily replace them in the future should I decide. The wires are fed down the wall using a pull string I installed off camera. This makes for a super clean look. Stick around to the end of the video because the results are simply amazing. The last major thing we needed to do was install some acoustic foam to eliminate echoes in the room. David stopped by and helped me hang some sheets of 8th inch plywood on the wall. The plywood will allow me to glue the acoustic foam to the wall, but be able to move or completely remove it later without leaving adhesive all over the walls. I drew a 12 inch by 12 inch grid on the wall and got started gluing each foam tile to the plywood. I used 3M Super 77 spray adhesive to hold them in place and it worked fantastic. I also painted the edge of the plywood that would be visible just for aesthetic reasons. And now it's time for the reveal.
Well, welcome to the new Geek Pub set. I'm so glad you're here. Um, so this set will probably change and morph over time. I'll probably um, change the decor from time to time. Basically, I just took everything that I had laying around and threw it on the shelves and stuff behind me just to see what it would look like. And um, <laughs> some of you are probably wondering about the RGB lighting. That's mostly uh, just for fun. Uh, I doubt I'll use it in many videos. I might actually... Um, you know, like at Christmas time or, or, you know, some holiday, I might like, let's say Halloween, I might make the lights orange for Halloween. You know, who knows? Um, it's there if I ever need it. It's the Geek Pub. Oh my gosh, I have to do geeky things. And so that is the RGB. Um, in addition to that, this will ultimately be the set for the Geek Bits podcast that we're doing. And I'm going to move this table over um, so that it, it captures the whole room. We'll scoot the camera back and then we'll have it set up for three to four people to be able to be um, on the set at any one time. So I've designed this set um, to have a little bit of fluidity in the way that it's laid out. Well, that about wraps it up for this video. Let me know what you think in the comments, anything you think I ought to do different, change, um, or add, and uh, just uh, let me know what you think. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video.